Welcome to this lecture in the ongoing series of lectures on real analysis. Last time we defined the notions of local and global extrema and we proved a lot of things but uh, one of the things that we proved was the following. Uh, suppose you have a function defined on the closed interval a comma b and you have point x naught in this open interval such that f is differentiable at that point and f has a local extremum at that point so either a local minima or a local maxima then the derivative of that the derivative of f at that point vanishes so we'll use this today and uh, what we'll be discovering today is the mean value theorem which is a very uh, which is a list of very interesting theorems in mathematics and uh, they're really very interesting so all right, so let's uh, start. So suppose we have a continuous uh, function on this closed interval and which is differentiable in this open interval such that it takes the same value on the endpoint. So fa equals fb. Then the claim is that there is a point c in this open interval such that the derivative of f at c vanishes. Let us see pictorially what this means. So we have a function f, I mean the, this is the graph of f and it takes the same value at a and b and this is how we have depicted it. So it says that the tangent at some point uh, in the in this open interval a comma b will be horizontal. That is what it says geometrically. This is how we express it analytically. All right, so let us prove this. So first uh, we will without loss of generality assume that f a equals f b equals zero. So this is just for convenience. One can always translate the function to make these two values zero and that really does not affect the result. So we could do without this assumption but uh, just for convenience we make this. Okay uh, and if f is a constant function then we are done. because in that case the derivative at any point in this interval would be zero so any point would work so that's the trivial case so assume f is non-constant so again assume without loss of generality that f takes positive value somewhere because then there is the other case where f takes the negative value somewhere which is completely similar to the one we'll be covering so assume lo without loss of generality that f takes positive value at some point okay and note that f is a bounded function because it is a continuous function on a compact set so it is bounded so define m as supremum of f. What does that mean? Written, it, written in full it means supremum of this set, meaning supremum of the image of f. And that is m. And clearly m is positive because f takes positive value somewhere, so the supremum of f will also be positive. So thus m is positive and further since again f is a continuous function defined on a compact set it achieves this supremum somewhere. This is what we discussed when we were discussing compactness. So let x naught in the domain be such that f of x naught equals to m. And since m is positive, we have x0 must lie in this open interval because on the endpoints a and b the value of the function is 0 so it cannot be equal to some positive number. Now lastly we use the fact that since 
M is a local extremum. In fact, it's a global extremum. So since M is in particular a local extremum, or okay, let me express it in a different way. Since F has a local extremum, actually it's a global extremum. At x naught, we have where x naught is actually in this open interval, we have the derivative of f at x naught is zero, and we are done. So that's it. That's the proof. So it's a very simple proof. It it says that well, if you so in some sense we constructed this point said that you take that point where you can find local extremum any such point is where this will be satisfying so that that's basically the main idea and it makes sense geometrically also when, if you are at the maximum point then either way you are going to decrease so it, it makes sense that the tangent will be horizontal there all right so now we'll be doing what is called Lagrange's mean value theorem the hypothesis is again you have a function defined on the closed interval it is continuous and it is differentiable here then the claim is that there is a point, uh, there is a point C in in this open interval a comma b such that the derivative of f at C equals that. And let us interpret this geometrically. So what is this quantity? That quantity is so this value is f of b, and that value is f of a. So this difference, this is f b minus f a, and this is b minus a. So the slope of this line is that thing. And well, so what is intuitively clear is that there must be some point on this part such that the tangent at that point is parallel to this line. So the slope of this tangent should be equal to the slope of this line. And that's what this says precisely. This is the slope of the tangent at the point c comma f of c. If this is c, then this is c comma f of c. And the slope of the tangent at that point is this number. So geometrically, it's something very, very clear. And in fact, it is just Rolle's theorem. If you look at the graph of the function with reference to this line, kind of you just rotate your head and now look at the function. So basically what we'll be doing is exactly that. We'll look at the function with reference to this line. Uh, so <coughs> we'll be recording just these lengths. And we'll note that the value of these lengths at this point is 0 and that that point is 0. So there must be some point where the rate of change of this length is 0 and that will give us the result. So let us do it. So define... define h as h of x equals and this we will have to understand what am I writing f of x minus f b minus f a upon b minus a into x minus a plus f a so maybe I should write plus f a this way so that there is no confusion. So what have I written? This first guy is the value of this vertical length. If this is x, then that is f of x. And what is this? So if this is x, this length is that horrible looking thing. This is just basic equation of a line thing that we that we learned in high school. So if you substitute x equals a here, you get f of a. If you substitute x equals b here, then this thing cancels off and this thing then can cancels off and you'll get f of b. So all the intermediate lengths will be given by that expression. You can work this out for yourself, but this is what it is. So now you'll note that, uh, note that h of a equals h of b equals zero. And that is no surprise because this length minus this this length is 0 and this length minus this length is 0 that's what 
these two expressions will immediately tell you and you can compute it like uh, like in like doing just some algebra so that's there and now a by rose theorem yeah so since f is differentiable and of course this is a differentiable function these are just constants this is also a differentiable function in this in this uh, range and this is also continuous in that range this is continuous in that range so therefore so is h so you can apply rose theorem to h so therefore by rolle's theorem there is some point c in this open interval such that h prime c equals 0 but what is h prime c h prime c is nothing but f prime c minus f b minus f a divided by b minus a and that's it and that's what h prime c is you can compute it this is 0 and that gives the result which gives us A very simple proof okay now for the very interesting generalization of it which is called the Cauchy's mean value theorem so again this time we have two functions defined on that which are continuous and differentiable in this range <coughs> assume that the derivative of g does not vanish anywhere in this range then the claim is that there is some point in this range such that this happens and one can interpret this uh, as follows so instead of writing this expression you can write fb minus fa divided by b minus a and the denominator is gb minus ga divided by b minus a so this is exactly the same as that and you can think of it as a ratio of the average slopes of f and g as you go from a to b and this is the local slope the ratio of the local slope at the point x0 <coughs> so this says that there is some point x0 in this domain where the local slope equals the ratio of the, the ratio of the local slope equals the ratio of the average slopes anyway so let me just uh, give you a hint <coughs> as to how to do it so define h as So we define this for all x and since f and g are continuous in the closed interval a comma b so is h and since f and g are differentiable in the open interval a comma b so is h so we can apply Rolle's theorem to h provided we check that so check that h a equals h b and that's it so now apply Rolle's theorem and you'll get the desired result immediately okay so that proves this and as a special case if you take if g is defined like this just x going to x then you recover Cauchy's mean value theorem implies Lagrange's mean value theorem because then this is b minus a and that is just one so this is so far the most general result that we have seen in this list of results and I don't have anything more general to say anyway now we look at uh, an application of what we just discussed 
So again, we have a continuous function in this closed interval and which is differentiable in this open interval. Then the two things are equivalent is that f is an increasing function and the other is that the derivative of f at every, at every point is non-negative. So this can be very useful when you want to check if something is monotone or not. Okay, so let us prove it. So we assume 1, we want to show 2. So let x not be some arbitrary point in this. And we want to show that this is non-negative. Okay. So <coughs> here is the thing. Since f is increasing, we have f of x minus f of x naught is at least zero if x is greater than x naught which implies that f of x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught is at least zero if x is greater than x naught which implies if you take the limit the same thing will be preserved there is no if so which is same as saying that the right derivative of f at x naught is greater than equal to zero but since f is differentiable at x naught the right derivative and the derivative are the same thing so that that proves what we wanted to show let me write it here so that proves that this thing is greater than equal to zero and this part is done the second part is we assume we assume that the derivative is non-negative everywhere in the open interval and we will show that f is increasing so if so assume that f is not increasing that there exist alpha and beta in this closed interval such that alpha is less than alpha is less than beta and f alpha is greater than equal to oh sorry greater than f beta so that's what it means to say that f is not an increasing function you should find you should be able to find two such mischievous points but then if we take this ratio this is this is less than zero but now by Lagrange's mean value theorem this is equal to the derivative at some point strictly between alpha and beta for some c lying strictly between alpha and beta immediately from Lagrange because this is equal to that for some c okay but since c is strictly between alpha and beta it is also strictly between a and b and that means the derivative at some point strictly between a and b is zero which contradicts 2 and therefore we are done I won't be writing the full thing but uh, I hope you follow okay lastly this I would like to leave as an exercise but at least let me say something so if, again we have a continuous function on this closed interval which is differentiable in this open interval assume the derivative of f vanishes everywhere in this open interval then we want to show that f is a constant function so suppose not then f alpha is not equal to f beta 
for some alpha and beta in a comma b of course then alpha and beta are different so if you take this ratio okay let me not write it this way so if you take this ratio this ratio is also non zero and by lagrange this is equal to f prime c for some c strictly between alpha and beta which is strictly between a and b which contradicts this hypothesis so that's the proof so f must be a constant function otherwise you have a contradiction so that's it that's all that i wanted to say as usual like comment share subscribe I also have patreon the link is in the description below